Hello learners, today we will learn about full service carriers. In this unit, we are undertaking the case study of full service carriers in India other than Air India. After going through this unit, you would be able to know about aviation market players in India, business model of full service carriers, Jet Airways and its growth as full service carrier, reasons for its downfall, emergence of new full service carrier Vistara and its operation. So let's start. Indian aviation sector is witnessing a growth phase both in terms of market size and investment. India's passenger traffic grew at 16.52% to reach 308.75 million passengers in 2018. Domestic passenger traffic reached 243 million in 2018 and is expected to become 293.28 million by 2020. International passengers reached 65.48 million in 2018 and this international air traffic is expected to become 76 million by 2020. To satisfy this forecasted air traffic, the government of India has been working towards increasing the number of airports. As of March 2019, India has 103 operational airports, which are planned to reach 190 to 200 by 2040. Government has also allowed foreign direct investment in aviation sector. The FDI inflows in India's air transport sector reached US dollar 1817.23 million between April 2000 and December 2018. The government has allowed 100% FDI under automatic route in scheduled air transport, regional air transport services and domestic scheduled passenger airline. To cater to this large air travel market, the aviation market in India is made up of full-service carriers, low-cost carriers and charter airline. In this unit, we will focus our attention on full-service carriers. We will learn about two major full-service carriers of India, Jet Airways and Vistara. We have included these case studies for the tourism course from the point of view of familiarizing you with the functioning of full service carriers and to know more about the current full service carriers of India and to understand the challenges they are facing in the aviation sector in India. Let us start with knowing what are full service carriers. Full service carriers or we can also say FSC during the course are the traditional airlines with a business model that focuses on providing a wide range of pre-flight and onboard services including different service classes and connecting flights. They are also known as legacy carriers. Full service airlines often have a long history and are flag carriers for their country of origin. Like in India, we have Air India which is the flag carrier of India. So now let's talk about the characteristics of full service carriers business model. Overall, full service carriers strive to provide comfort for air travel and have their business model centered around it. They aim to provide high level of service and create a loyal customer base. If compared to low-cost carriers, which compete largely on cost, the Indian full-service carriers compete through their loyalty programs. The business model of full-service carriers include the following strategy. 
the first is complementary onboard facility a full service airline typically offers passengers in flight entertainment check baggage meals beverages on board and comforts such as blankets pillows in the same ticket price second is comfortable sitting the seats in the full service carriers have more reclining capacity than a low cost carriers and also have more leg room for a comfortable journey full service carriers use airlines or aircrafts with multi class cabin so they offer passengers the choice of economy or business class travel and on some flights premium economy and first class all these classes have different type of sitting arrangements it differs on the availability of leg room and the type of seat they have large and diverse fleet legacy airlines or full service carriers have generally a fairly large fleet which is diversified by using different type of aircrafts to cater to different routes and demands they have diverse and extensive routing full service carriers operate on all sort of routes starting with long haul through medium range or short haul and regional flights full service carriers operate their flights based on hub and spoke model as compared to low cost carriers which generally work on point to point module hub and spoke model involves a system of connections to destinations around a single hub generally cities that are the largest and most economically viable in their area with this model airlines will require the passenger to stop in their hub to connect between two cities creating the spokes of the system they are majorly part of global airline alliances so a full service carrier are a part of global airlines alliances like sky team one word or star airlines they have complex pricing and adopt price discrimination full service carriers offer very diversified fares starting with almost low cost last minute or first minute tariffs and ending with really expensive business class and first class seats ticket distribution full service carriers use gds that is global distribution system for ticket distribution loyalty programs full service carriers have a dedicated loyalty programs for frequent flyers which offers reasonable rewards for traveling with a given airline and or more frequently with a given airline alliance now let's talk about the major full service carriers that have been operating in india till 2018 full service carrier market share in india was majorly catered by air india jet airways and vistara we have read about air india in earlier unit here in this unit we will focus our attention on jet airways and vistara so let's start with jet airways jet airways was one of the largest full service carriers in india till 2018 with hubs at mumbai delhi chennai and amsterdam airports the carrier operated an extensive domestic and regional network within the subcontinent and previously operated services to europe middle east southeast asia and north america the jet airways temporarily suspended all its operation from 16th april 2019 due to financial issues the iter code of jet airways was 9w let's look into the history of jet airways a bit jet airways limited was incorporated on 1st april 1992 as a private company 
with limited liability. It was funded by Naresh Goyal, Gulf Air and Kuwait Airways, where Naresh Goyal held the most shares, 60%, followed by 20% of Gulf Air and 20% of Kuwait Airways. It commenced operation as an air taxi operator in India from 5th May 1993. The first flight was from Bombay to Ahmedabad. Impressively enough, they carried over half a million passengers to 12 destinations in their first year only. In 1994, Jet Airways became the first airline in India to operate the Boeing 737-400 aircraft. The company was granted the scheduled airline status on 14th January of the year 1995. This allowed them to begin normal routes like any other airline. As they were now a proper airline, they were able to start building alliances. Their first alliance was with KLM to deliver marketing support in Europe and in return provide access to India to KLM. Jet Airways became a deemed public company on 1st July 1996. Now, as they were able to expand their business, they did a lot of things for their expansion. So, as a part of expansion policy in 1996, Jet Airways placed a huge order of 375 million US dollar directly with Boeing for purchasing four 737-400 and six 737-800 aircraft to expand their passenger capacity to carry 2.4 million passengers a year. Until now, much of this rapid expansion had been fueled by foreign investment particularly from Gulf Air and Kuwait Airlines. However, in 1997, the government of India ruled that no foreign companies would be allowed to own a part of India's domestic airlines. And thus, the original owner, Naresh Goyal, purchased back the remaining 40% of the shares. In 1999, Jet Airways announced an order of 10 more Boeing 737-800 for further expansion. Till now, they had captured major domestic market share, second to that of national carrier Air India. In 2003, India government gave Jet Airways authorization to run international routes. The airline launched its first international flight in March 2004 from Chennai to Colombo. Jet Airways was now listed on Bombay Stock Exchange and became a public company on 28 December 2004. After the government lifted the foreign ownership limits on Indian Airlines to 49% from the previous 40%, Jet Airways listed itself on the local stock exchange to raise funds for further expansion. They offered 20% of the company to investors to raise more funds. In May 2005, Jet Airways launched its first intercontinental non-stop flight from Mumbai to London. In 2006, the company signed a special code sharing agreement with American Airlines, which is one of the world's largest carrier for India and US flights. From here, Jet Airways saw an exponential growth as a full service carrier for both domestic and international market. In subsequent years, Jet Airways launched flights to many international routes, purchased more aircrafts entered into bilateral agreements and code sharing agreements with other airlines. Jet Airways started its frequent flyer program to create the loyal customer base. The market dominance of Jet Airways continued and they also bought Air Sahara and rebranded it as their own low-cost carrier Jet Light in 2007. 
By this, a full service carrier Jet Airways also entered into the low cost carrier market. Now let's talk about the fleet. As on 31st March 2018, the company had a fleet of 124 aircrafts comprising 10 Boeing 777-300 aircraft, 4 Airbus A330-200 aircraft, 4 Airbus A330-300 aircraft, 18 next generation Boeing aircraft, 15 modern ATR turboprop aircraft and 3 ATR 72-600 aircraft. Up till its shutdown in 2019, Jet Airways served 57 destinations including 37 domestic and 20 international destinations in 15 countries across Asia, Europe, North America and Middle East. Now let's talk about the reasons due to which a successful airline like Jet Airways had to face financial crisis and ultimate shutdown. The rising popularity of other lccs like indigo and spicejet offered a fierce competition to full service carriers such as jet airways as passenger demand fell jet airways business was forced to start lowering their prices but being a full service carrier the service remained same now this was the beginning of the end of jet airways they pushed through their cash reserves and took on more debt to stay competitive and offer low tickets to the passengers as of november 2018 jet airways reported to have a negative financial outlook due to increasing losses in march 2019 it was reported that nearly a fourth of jet airways aircrafts were grounded due to unpaid lease raise Finally on 5th April 2019 Indian Oil Corporation stopped supplying fuel to the airline citing non payment of dues as the emergency funds were still not been credited after this on 12th April 2019 Jet Airways announced the suspension of all Eastern India bound and all international flights due to a lack of available aircraft on april 17 the airline has suspended all flight operations due to lenders rejecting rupees 4 billion of emergency funding that was required by jet airways and finally its membership in the international air transport association was suspended on 17th june after getting no acceptable offers from Etihad Airways and Hinduja Group lenders to Jet Airways decided to refer the company to National Company Law Tribunal for bankruptcy proceedings with a overall debt of 1.2 billion US dollar with this the legacy of Jet Airways came to an end though being a major market player till till 2018 Jet Airways had to face shutdown due to the current business model and the fierce competition offered by other low cost carriers. Now let's talk about the other full service carriers currently in operation in India which is Vistara. Vistara is an Indian full service carrier based at Delhi Indira Gandhi International Airport. The airline provides domestic services to major metropolitan centers and tourism destinations with a fleet of Airbus A320 aircrafts. This carrier is a joint venture between Singapore Airlines Group and Tata Sons, wherein Tata Sons holds 51% of the stake in partnership and Singapore Airlines own 49% stake the company is registered as tata sia airlines limited the airline had carried more than 2 million passengers by june 2016 and as of may 
has a market share of 4.7% in the domestic aviation segment making it the sixth largest domestic airline the name vistara is drawn from the sanskrit word vistar which means limitless expense the logo of vistara airline is an eight pointed star in the center where the dynamic intertwined forms of the vistara star creates a continuous shape that represents the seamless experience vistara offers to deliver the ita code of vistara airlines is u Okay. Let's talk about the history or the emergence of this airline. In 2013, Tata Sons and Singapore Airlines came together to offer a distinguished flying experience to air travelers in India. With its strong historical ties with aviation, the Tata Group had long wished to re-enter the aviation sector after Tata Airlines was renamed Air India and eventually nationalized both the companies had made a bid in the mid 1990s to launch a full service carrier in india but it was an unsuccessful attempt as they were denied regulatory approval by the indian government both the companies also teamed up in 2000 to purchase stakes in air india but were unsuccessful with india opening up its airline sector for 49% foreign direct investment in 2012 the both partners once again sought approval for a tie up and which was finally granted in october 2013 after this on november 5 2013 vistara's holding company Tata Sia Airlines Limited was incorporated and on January 9, 2015, Vistara started its operation with the maiden flight from Delhi to Mumbai. Now let's have a look at its growth and expansion. In a short span of time, Vistara has rapidly expanded its market size both in terms of network and services. Vistara now serves 26 destinations with over 1200 flights in a week. The airline connects destinations across the length and breadth of the country. Many destinations are Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, Pune, Ahmedabad, Lucknow, Goa, Varanasi and etc. The overall collection of destination has different categories of cities. Vistara has already flown more than 15 million happy customers. Vistara also started its first international service from Delhi to Singapore and Mumbai to Singapore on 6th and 7th August 2019 using the Boeing 737-800 NG which was earlier used by Jet Airways. Now let's have a look at the management of Vistara Air. Its parentage is reflected in the company's management with expertise drawn from both Singapore Airlines and Tata Sons. As of June 2019, Vistara is headed by a five-member board of directors which comprises of chairman who is MD of Titan Company, directors on board executive vp from of singapore airlines and independent directors the overall management is headed by board of directors under whom there is chief executive officer who controls or heads chief financial officer chief commercial officer chief information and innovation officer and chief strategy officer under them there are senior vice presidents of various departments such as human resource and corporate affairs flights corporation and engineering so overall this is the management or organizational structure of vistara air now let's see the fleet of vistara as of june 2019 vistara fleet consists of 
28 aircrafts. This is a collection of 13 Airbus 320 200, 9 Airbus A320 Neo, and 6 Boeing 737 800. Vistara took delivery of its first aircraft at New Delhi on 25 September 2014. As a part of further expansion, Vistara has placed order of 67 more aircrafts as of June 2019. Vistara is envisioned as a premium full-service carrier to cater to the demands of high-end business travellers in India's civil aviation market which is currently dominated by low-cost carriers. By providing innovative service, they are focused on approaching the market differently and rise above the price-focused competition. The services offered by the airline include multi-class cabin. Vistara offers three class configurations which are business class, economy class and premium economy. Vistara is the first full service carrier in India to offer or to introduce the so called premium economy. Premium economy cabin is aimed at the traveller who relishes the additional space and amenities to work or relax without the expense of a business class ticket. Vistara Air provides in-flight entertainment through wireless Wi-Fi known as Vistara World which can be accessed on travellers' personal handheld devices. It offers a multimedia library of over 70 hours of Bollywood and Hollywood content of various genres. It features movies of various categories such as drama, romance, comedy, thriller, action, adventure and kids and as well as popular Indian and Western TV programs. The selection also includes various genres of music. Vistara World also offers a live moving map which displays the live status of the aircraft so the passengers can track their location as they fly. Onboard Catering The in-flight food is catered by Taj Sats Air Catering which is another joint venture between Tata and a Singaporean company. Vistara offers four different meals for each cabin for different time of the day. Breakfast, refreshment, lunch and dinner with options of one vegetarian and one non-vegetarian dish in economy class, two vegetarian and one non-vegetarian dish in premium economy and two vegetarian and two non-vegetarian dishes for business class cabin. They also offer premium lounge. On 29 March 2016, Vistara inaugurated premium lounge service for its business class passengers and Club Vistara Platinum and Gold members at the departure level of Terminal 3 of Indira Gandhi International Airport, Delhi. The lounge is spread across 250 square meters on the air side and can seat 75 people at a time. Frequent Flyer Program Vistara is the first airline in India to offer a value-based frequent flyer program called Club Vistara where loyalty points are acquired based on actual spending on fares rather than miles travelled. On 29 January 2015, Vistara announced a partnership agreement with Singapore Airlines which allows Club Vistara members to earn and redeem miles with the Chris Flyer program on Singapore Airlines and Silk Air flights. Till now, we have learned about two major full service carriers of India, but both of them are facing fierce competition in the aviation market. So, let's talk about the challenges faced by full service carriers in India. 
India is currently the world's fastest growing and third largest domestic civil aviation market. But this market is majorly dominated by low cost carriers such as Indigo and Spicejet. To remain in the market, the full service carriers play close to the LCC fares in economy class. In the Indian market, both LCCs and FSCs operate from the same airport with new aircraft offering high frequency on key markets. LCC reliability, on-time performance, consistency, ground, product and cabin crew standards, particularly on Indigo flights, are comparable with or even better than FSCs. Baggage allowance on discount fare is the same on all carriers. As a result, India is virtually a 100% low fare market. Today, full service carriers are capturing some of their traffic because they are pricing below cost, but this is not sustainable in long run. As in when full service carriers increase their fares to reflect their cost base and charge a premium above low cost carrier, we can expect to see passengers increasingly shifting to low-cost carriers. This operating environment poses a significant challenge for full-service carriers as they have to provide full service but at a lower cost. This is one of the major reasons for the fall of jet airways. So now, let's sum up our learning we had in this unit. In this, we have learned that aviation sector in India is growing by leaps and bounds and is expected to see a positive growth in future. In India, there is a huge demand for both domestic and international air travel, which has created a large aviation market. Many national and international businesses are attracted towards this potentially growing market and the new FDI policy of government in aviation industry has paved a positive environment for the new entrants. In this unit, we have discussed two major full-service carriers catering to air travel demand in India. Jet Airways was a prominent market leader till 2018, but saw a shutdown due to financial crisis. Vistara, a relatively new market player, has been able to capture attention in the market due to its quality of service and innovation. The current full service carriers and potential future business have a fierce competition from low cost carrier and would have to adapt their strategies to sustain in this environment. Thank you and happy learning.